Hello everyone, my name is Mark Dennis and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about the Panasonic G80 or G85 for you guys in the States and the Panasonic Image app for iOS and Android uh, which is available for download and complements this little camera unbelievably well. Okay, well I am pretty new to video and uh, so I did a lot of research for picking up the G80 here. Um, it could have been a Sony, it could have been a few other things really I guess. But um, I'm rather delighted I did pick up this camera, um, especially as I'm shooting this on a Nikon at the moment and that has been a lot more problematic to set up than this little thing here. Um, you already know the specs of this camera, there's plenty of reviews on YouTube um, and if you are looking for a really good one, uh, I can highly recommend uh, DSLR Video Shooter. Um, they do some really good stuff over there. And uh, David Thorpe does another really good review as well. Um, but what I did notice with some of these reviews, there wasn't much said about the Image app. And this is what I'm going to try and show you today, how well the Image app works um, in controlling this camera. And I believe the GH5 and the GH4, whatever. Uh, so we'll be taking a closer look at that and also how that app has helped me get um, the autofocus issues or the slight autofocus issues I've had with this sorted. Uh, so yeah, let's have a quick look. To access the app, you have to engage Wi-Fi in the camera. From there, you can either create a new connection or use a connection that you have previously set up. After a while, you will be able to select the Wi-Fi connection that you have created on your Android or iOS device. To speed things up, you can assign the Wi-Fi to a function, button or icon. I also turn peaking on to assist with manual focusing. Once Wi-Fi is connected, you can then boot up the Panasonic app. You will then have access to both the quick menu and all recording settings. You can then change both aperture and shutter speed and white balance. You can also change autofocus modes. And finally, you can turn peaking on and off and even manually focus the lens itself. This app has made a really big difference to me. It is a brilliant piece of software. It works very, very well with my G80 or G85. Um, it even actually precludes you really having to worry too much about the flip out screen, especially if you're doing sort of scenarios where you're just filming yourself in a static shot, um, not so much vlogging. Um, but yeah, it works great. The only real problem I reckon I've come across so far with this sort of setup is, is the autofocus and how in some modes, the autofocus just doesn't track particularly well. Uh, at present I've got it in the um, eye face detection mode, so I don't know how this is looking, but I've had inconsistent results. Sometimes it's very good, sometimes it does seem to drift in and out of focus. Um, then it might be sharp for another sort of two or three minutes and then for some unknown reason it just disappears again. So we've got that going at the moment. I'm now going to switch over to single area and see if that's any better. And here we go, so we're going into one area mode and I'm just going to plant it on my face. There we go, and we're going to see how well that works. Oh, let me go make sure it's on right over my face. Give it fair. There we go. So yeah, sometimes again with the single area, it it works pretty well as well. Um, but again, I've had a similar sort of problem, and so I was kind of resorting a little bit to well, how do I get around this? Um, and uh, just messing about with the app the other day, um, I realised I could actually set the camera. Uh, to a manual also to a manual focus and the lens to manual focus yet I could still focus it from here using peaking and I didn't realize that actually if you set peaking on the camera and you can see it on the display there you can see the peaking on the display here um, and that has been fantastic so I'm gonna switch over to that mode but I'm gonna have to just stop recording and then I'll, I'll start again Okay, well here I have it set now to manual focus mode and I'm controlling that via the app here um, with the up and down arrows and I have had uh, peaking switched on and high which enables me to go and see the green east effectively bits down here. Um, I know I'm going to be in focus and now the lens shouldn't shift in and out of focus at all. It should just be absolutely static on me. Now this is really useful if you are going to be using fairly shallow depth of field. So I think I'm on at the moment uh, f2.2 uh, and yeah, with a bit of fingers crossed it should be fairly blurry out the back there. 
and um, I should be nice and sharp without drifting in and out of focus. So um, it's really worth a go this. I think it's a brilliant bit of kit. Um, the two, the app and the camera make for a wonderful team, especially if, say, if you're going to be working alone. Um, I hardly ever turn the screen around now um, on the camera because I simply don't need to because I can see what's going on on my phone or on, on an iPad or something like that. Um, but yeah, a great bit of kit, great camera. I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. Uh, as I say, I will, uh, I will try and keep uh, the videos coming as I learn more about all this video stuff. I'm predominantly a stills photographer, um, but I think this day and age you've really got to be into video, I think, as well. Uh, so yeah, it's been um, a bit of a learning curve and let's hope uh, I can carry on, hopefully, doing an okay job. Uh, many, many thanks for watching and uh, yeah, please check out my channel again.